Chapter 62 Journeys with Wolves Sophie! Freddy squealed. I hope you lot have been behaving yourselves, came Lydia's voice. As more torches lit up, they saw the two missing girls sitting astride two of the most colossal wolves they had ever seen, Lavender Brown included. More wolves joined them from between the trees. Most were not as huge as the two leaders, but they were still the size of horses, if shorter in the leg. Freddy ran forward, oblivious of the wolves. The girls jumped down and fell into his arms. Oddie strode towards them. Lydia detached herself from the others and ran to him. They hugged in relief. Then the rest of them joined in a melee of greeting. Christy stepped up to one wolf and scratched it behind the ears. Who are your new friends, Lids? she asked. I asked the forest for help in finding you lot, Lydia said. These guys came to our aid. That must have made for an interesting meeting, Oddie remarked. Wasn't a problem, she shrugged. They know their queen when they say her. Oddie patted a wolf on its shoulder. Good thing they met me first, Lydia continued. You'd have been a snack. Oddie paused and dropped his hand to his side. That's no unfit for something, he muttered. The wolf looked at him. Whatever she thinks of you, Odysseus, Lydia smiled. I'm happy to see you. Did you miss me? I was worried, he confessed. Oh, Lydia said. Imagine you being worried. Yeah, I was worried I might have gone deaf, he joked. Hey, you, she intoned. I'm glad to be home. They looked at each other and blushed. So, Lids, Freddy said, how did you get away from that dragon? I had my wand and my ingenuity, of course. Hey, Sophie just told us she rescued you, and a silver dragon killed the green one, Christy grinned. I didn't say my ingenuity helped, Lydia backpedalled. Where'd you find the silver dragon? Jimmy inquired. He's an old friend, Lydia said pensively. Without mentioning names, I think he's an interfering old git we all know. But I kind of love him. The others nodded. And some of them with scant regard for the rules, Oddie added with a wry smile. So, can we go back to bed now? Dean asked. We should prepare to move on, Oddie announced. Don't forget how close to Shikika we still are. They might be tracking us. He stopped himself. Sorry, Lydia, I was forgetting. This is your call, though that would be my advice. I think you're right, Lydia said. We should travel for maybe half a day with the wolves carrying us. When we stop, we can let the wolves hunt. How far have they come? Shona asked. Over a hundred kilometres since sunset last night, Lydia said. They could have gone faster, but we wouldn't have been able to hold on. And they had to stop a few times to drink. They must be hungry, Shona mused. They're not too hungry yet, but they could do to feed today. Just so they don't start looking at us too greedily, Lydia said, with a mischievous smirk. We should move in stages again, as we did when we were travelling by broom, Oddie said, so that Freddy can check the mandala. You're right, Lydia agreed. No signs yet, Freddy? No, babes, Freddy shrugged. I tried it last night. Nothing yet. But there are only two more tokens to go. Actually, Oddie said, only one more token. The seventh essence is our goal. Finding it is part of the culmination of the quest. And what will that be? Corbin asked. Oddie frowned. I'm not sure. That was the hardest thing for Ambrose to talk about, because of reasons. Everyone was staring at Oddie in expectation. He sighed. As far as I could make out, it is some sort of confrontation with the Watcher and his army. The companions travelled on wolfback until early afternoon. The mood was sombre after the initial excitement of riding on enormous wolves through the sun-dappled forest. Oddie's words had reminded them how serious their quest was. Ambrose's comment about every questing team having lost at least one member pressed on Lydia's mind. She had always suspected that being the hero of the quest would have serious implications. As she thought about it now, 
she realised she was, at some level, resigned to the possibility of her own death. They had an entire world to save, after all. Her mum, her dad, everyone at Hogwarts, all her friends from primary school, everyone she had met, and everyone she had not. These people were all worth dying for, but only if she was doing the dying. The horror was the possibility of the others being killed. None of them deserved that. Freddy? Sophie? Shona? Odysseus? No! She couldn't handle that. It was up to her to save them as well. Even as she exploded with the force of it, she would use every gram of magic she could summon to do that. Audrey reminded her they should stop to let the wolves hunt. They found a clearing where they could set up camp. The wolves left to hunt for food. The humans did without a campfire and cast their protective charms around the area. A stream flowed just beyond the clearing. They filled their water bottles, thankful as ever for the sterilising magic Ambrose had built into them. The clearing was small, and the surrounding trees were tall enough to keep even the high midday sun from reaching them. They felt cool in their shade. Lydia didn't know how long it might take the wolves to satisfy their hunger. They were large enough to be formidable hunters but of course would require more food to nourish them. The team was impressed that the wolves could hunt after eighteen hours of almost constant running. Xander told them it was not unusual for ordinary wolves to look for many hours and cover great distances. In his estimation, they would not be moving on that day. After lunch, Freddy went to lie in the boys' tent to consult the mandala. Normally Xander would have joined him. This time he stayed close to Lydia. Quinn left them to wander in the forest. Being tall and bony, he had been uncomfortable on wolfback. The others sat in small groups and talked together in subdued tones. Lydia lay on her back and stared up at the sky between the trees. Xander was curled up on one side of her, purring. Sophie was lying at the other side. For much of the time the girls held hands, glad to be together in sisterhood once more. As she breathed in the resin-scented air, she enjoyed having her companions close again. Lydia felt her anxiety subside, leaving just the granite core of her resolve. She would carry out the quest, and none of her team would die. None but her, of course. The wolves returned as night fell. The hunt had satisfied them. The companions lit a campfire, the wolves stayed at the edge of its light, under the surrounding trees. Lydia told the others the wolves were curious about humans and their fire, but were at ease with it from a distance. All evening the wolves' eyes shone in the dark as they glanced towards the fire. Freddy had reported that the mandala was showing nothing. Quinn returned to say he'd seen no sign of pursuers. He also pointed out that, protective charms or not, no one would approach the pack of wolves which encircled them. The mood of the group lightened. They had left pursuit behind, and still had some way to go before they need think about the next token. High above the starry sky looked cold, but fire and friendships were warm. As they shared stories and jokes around the fire, Christy, Shona and Freddy wrapped a blanket around themselves. The others took to the idea. Lydia, Sophie and Oddie huddled under another. Jimmy and Corbin wound a sleeping bag around their bodies so tightly that when one tried to move, both fell over. Dean and Quinn sat on their blanket with Xander, heckling and mocking each other's stories. The following morning the companions buried the cold remains of the fire. They had let it go out as they went to bed. The wolves had moved closer overnight. They were within the clearing by the dawn, rather than under the trees. The humans shared their breakfast with the wolves, which the magnificent beasts gratefully accepted. They travelled until lunchtime, onward through the trees. Lydia could feel they were going in the right direction. They set a temporary camp so that Freddy could consult the mandala. It gave him no sign. They broke camp, remounted and rode on, through the ever-changing but ever-familiar forest, camping again as night approached. 
The next day went in much the same way, until Freddy emerged from the tent in the lunchtime camp. The mandala had shown him the next token. It's different this time, he told them. It's not exactly round, it's got like a ridge on it and a pointy end, and it's really brown. Show me, Lydia demanded. She, Freddy and Oddie went back into the boys' tent to examine the mandala. It was as Freddy had described. What do you think? Freddy asked, hopping from one foot to the other. The next token, we think, relates to the life essence, Woody mused. I think this must be... A seed, Lydia said. Oh my God, Freddy complained. Where are we going to find a seed in a forest? You're right, Lydia said. I have to look for one particular seed in a forest full of seeds. The mandala will guide you, Lydia, Oddie reminded her. I know, but only to the area, she said. Perhaps to a specific tree. We'll just have to see when we get there, Freddy said. And we'll have to find out what guardians there are, Oddie added. We have guardians of our own now, Lydia said. They went outside and told the rest of the team what they had seen. They stowed the tents and found the wolf pack. The wolves were drinking from a stream down the slope from where the camp had been. They seemed to sense the changed mood of the company and were eager to be on their way. Lydia held the mandala, close her eyes, and let it pull her toward the next token. They set off. Travelling on wolfback, the companions reached the site of the token before the afternoon was much older. Lydia halted the lupine cavalcade and pointed across the river to a ridge opposite. Up there, she announced to the others. She was pointing to a stand of particularly tall trees at the highest point of the ridge. Should we look for somewhere to camp? Shona asked. I'd advise we find out what guardians there are, see if we can get to the token first, Oddie said. Will the wolves be all right crossing the river, Faye? Lydia closed her eyes and reached into the mind of her wolf. Yes, no problem for them, she replied, but we will have to hang on. The river was not deep, and could see the rocks over which it ran, but it was wide and churned with the force of its flow. I have an idea, said Lydia, reaching into her rucksack. She pulled out her broom and beckoned to Sophie, who was talking with Christy. Sophie urged her wolf forward and joined Lydia. It's not that bad, said Jimmy. We are right on the wolves. I'm not taking chances, Lydia said. I'm not suggesting we all fly. Sophie could hover over us in case anyone falls in. Meaning me, probably, said Shona. Nuh-uh, Freddy contradicted. I'll have you know I'm the class disaster. I'm hoping nobody gets into trouble, Lydia said. Just not taking risks. I need every one of you. Are you aware there are bears watching us? Quinn asked. They followed his gaze downstream. Two black bears were standing on all fours on the far bank, facing towards them. I think I'd rather have Sophie pulling me out of the water, Shona said, a nervous shake in her voice. They won't approach a pack of wolves this size, Quinn assured her. They're forest creatures, Lydia said. I mean, they're on our side. We'll do as I tell them. Come on, let's get across and look for this token. I would not be so sure of the allegiances of the bears, Lady Lydia, said Quinn. We are passing into a part of the forest known as the Wilderswood. I fear the watcher's influence lies heavy on this land. Crossing the river, the water seldom came up to the bellies of their mounts. It splashed at the riders' feet, but they hung on. The hands wound into the long fur of the wolf's shoulders. The boulders in the water were smooth and sometimes rolled underfoot. The wolves jerked side to side and up and down as they crossed. It was not a simple task for the riders to hold on. Shona almost lived up to her prediction, sliding sideways as her wolf encountered a tilting boulder. Sophie was by her side and helping her regain her seat as soon as Shona realised she was slipping. Freddy managed admirably. Quinn looked as though this was something he did every day. As they arrived on the far bank, Xander sprang from Lydia's rucksack and offered to scout ahead. He shot off up the slope towards the trees while the humans bemoaned their wet feet. 
They followed him up on foot. It was steep. They knew it would be difficult to keep their seats if they rode. Zander reported back before they had climbed a quarter of the way. Doesn't seem to be anything untoward, he told Lydia, other than quite a few squirrels in the treetops. You might get them to show you where the token is. They tramped on up the slope. The wolves spread out and moved ahead. Lydia knew it was their instinct to surround the area. It pleased her that even her animal friends could give her good advice in their own way. Quinn's warning about the wilder's wood still niggled at the back of her mind, however. At the top of the slope, Lydia walked back and forth with the mandala in her hand. She was trying to find which of the trees held the token. The difference in the mandala's pull between them was subtle. There were seven trees. They were tall with straight red trunks, silvery green leaves, and branches which started too high for them to reach and climb. The leafy canopy they created was luxuriant and blocked out any direct view of the sky. Lydia decided on a tree. She walked around it, the mandala still cradled in her hands. This is the one, she told the others. I'll fly up on my broom and look for the seed token. So I come with you, asked Dean. We're going to be guardians of some kind. No offence, Dean, said Sophie. But wouldn't it be better if I went? The branches look pretty close together. I might be able to get us into tighter spaces. Dean laughed. If you're trying to say you're more like a chipmunk and I'm more like a moose, then yeah, you're right. I'll stay down here and cry myself thin. It's not like I'm calling you a moose, Sophie protested. Just saying you're statuesque. Like a statue of a moose, for instance. Bugger off then, Soph, Dean waved her away. Oh no, you can't. You need to borrow somebody's broom. When you two have quite finished flirting, Lydia prompted. Ew, Ew said Sophie and Dean together, while the others laughed. As Lydia handed back the mandala to Freddy, Dean drew out his broom from his rucksack and gave it to Sophie. Sophie made a show of rubbing the handle clean with the arm of her long-sleeved T-shirt. Then she jumped on it and joined Lydia in flying up toward the tree's apex. They circled around the tree, peering through the foliage for the seed they had seen in the mandala. They saw movement in the canopy, the squirrels Sander had mentioned. As Lydia neared the top of the tree, she spied the seed. It was the size of a duck's egg and shone in a beam of sunlight. It stood on one of the short top branches, attached by a stalk. I've found it, Lydia called down to the group waiting below. Get ready to take it and go, Shona. As Lydia hovered on her broom and reached for it, she felt a sharp pain in her arm. A squirrel had bitten her. She grabbed the seed and plucked it from its stalk. The tree erupted. Flying squirrels seemed to spring from every branch. They were black, larger than usual, and could fly rather than glide like normal flying squirrels. The squirrels mobbed the two girls, biting, then darting away again. Gripping the seed in one hand, Lydia wheeled and bucked on her broom, trying to avoid the squirrels' attacks. Sophie flew rings around Lydia, batting the squirrels off with her hand. Down to the ground, Lydia shouted. They swooped down. A squirrel crashed into Lydia's head and bit her on the neck. She dropped the seed in shock. The squirrels appeared everywhere she looked. She could make out the shadowy outline of Sophie weaving around her through the cloud of flying vermin. Lydia saw the ground just in time to level out and jump off her broom. A wolf's jaw snapped by her ear, crunching a squirrel. The squirrels soared back into the air, out of reach. The wolves were all around the companions, leaping into the air, snapping and snarling at the squirrels. The squirrels darted at the humans, biting and scratching, then flew away, avoiding the jaws of the wolves. Several of Lydia's team were spattered with their own blood. The wolves couldn't catch the squirrels, they were so quick. Xander ran up a wolf's back and leapt, bearing a squirrel to the ground. He had snapped its neck before it crashed onto the forest floor. The squirrel had been aiming for Sophie's face. Lydia looked around for Oddie. She couldn't see him. One's out, she cried. The barrage of spells brought many flying squirrels flopping onto the ground. The rest flew away, back into the trees. Damn it, said Lydia through her teeth. We're going to pay for that. Then she saw how right she was.